Hello, everybody, and good evening to you. Uh, well, good evening here, anyway. It's 11 o'clock p.m., and uh, we're broadcasting from the uh, webinaring, I guess, from the Temple of Silence here. And uh, we're preparing now a full for the full moon in Cancer. Um, inside your chat box are the details that you will need. Um, for uh, this week's Ask program, you know, we're attempting to invoke the higher energies on behalf of the difficult situations in the world. And also, uh, tomorrow uh, at 9.40 um, p.m., GMT again, Universal Time, uh, we'll be doing an exact full moon broadcast. I think it takes place at GMT at... Uh, 10.56 and uh, 31 seconds, something like that. I'll be substituting for Tuya, who's out of town, but very soon she'll be back and resuming her uh, duties with the ASK program. Well, here is uh, cancer, okay? The, one of the great signs of humanity and of seeing the wholeness of humanity as one. The rulers, as you see, are the moon representing the lunar vehicles, which are elemental lives, which are, in a way, uh, left over from a previous um, chain, and that have come to this particular chain to continue their progress. But uh, we, the incarnated soul, do have our struggles uh, under the number four with these particular lives, and our purpose is to uh, elevate them and redeem them, and then our victory comes and theirs as well. So the moon is the first ruler. Really, of course, uh, the moon is veiling. Uh, the Tibetans told us Vulcan for the physical body, Neptune for the astral body, and Uranus for the mental body. The esoteric and the hierarchical ruler of Neptune are the same, and they are... Uh, Neptune, Neptune is the ruler there. The unveiled Neptune is a very potent source of energy. Maybe it's the most powerful planet in our solar system at this time because its monad uh, is on the second ray of love wisdom and this is particularly a second ray uh, solar system. So we have to learn how somehow to receive these Neptunian energies. Uh, the moon veils them which means that our normal form nature blocks their access and maybe it's a good thing because DK said that uh, we have a lot of trouble dealing with the unveiled uh, Neptune. We couldn't quite handle it, but more and more, as we become more intelligent and sensitive and capable, we're able to take in those finer, more transcendental energies. You know, we, finally, uh, uh, Cancer is going to connect us via Neptune with the monadic plane, where a great temple is built, the Temple of Ezekiel, and finally, eventually, to the cosmic astral plane and to that creative hierarchy, which is just about, well, in terms of years, who knows, but just about liberated onto the cosmic astral plane, and it's said to be veiling the Christ. Um, here we have the Jafra uh, illustration. Oh, they're always uh, so helpful. He, individual of rare uh, insight in these matters. Um, but you, usually there's a fairly exoteric uh, presentation. Here is the crab, Cancer the crab, with the, with the two claws reaching out towards the moon. It does somewhat represent the retrogressive nature, the backward-looking nature of the Cancerian energy. It was very powerful energy, we're told, in the previous solar system, which was dedicated mostly to uh, intelligence. And it has a lot of third ray uh, connected with the third and seventh ray. Here is uh, Diana the Huntress. Um, uh, she is, in a way, a moon goddess. And uh, we have to keep our, uh, our, our vehicles, our elemental lunar lords, in good shape and clean and clear. Otherwise, madness is the result. So we have a, a big uh, cleanup job to do there. And Diana is... Um, or Artemis Diana, one of those goddesses that ensures that we do that or suffer the consequences. There is this uh, problem here with grasping in cancer, you know, the holding on to things and holding on to the things of the form, particularly. The old uh, saying is if you want to be enlightened, you have to uh, 
let go. Well, uh, every Cancerian person has to learn that. We do see the, the grasping, grasping hands below, and uh, this does uh, emphasize that uh, detachment is the way of the disciple. Gradually, as uh, Neptune becomes the ruler of Cancer, that detachment is much easier to achieve. It looks like we have something here, you know, sort of the, uh, the pearl in the oyster. And through the frictions of the fourth ray and just living in the human kingdom and all the suffering and conflict that we go through, eventually the pearl of wisdom, the pearl of great price is uh, formed within our experience. And I think it does represent that. So, uh, you know, as I say, a bit more of the exoteric part is emphasized here, but the true Neptunian nature, which connects us with the buddhic plane, connects us with the monadic plane, and ultimately with the source of true love in our solar system, uh, which is the uh, cosmic astral plane, the sign Cancer has a connection there. So the great ocean of life and love and light, uh, this is the destination. And somehow, you know, uh, in, in the sign Cancer, the integration of things comes together, the oneness of things. We're able to, to see that. And one of the great mantras connected with Cancer is the wholeness. The whole is seen as one. And may that be the case for all of us as we are getting so caught up in duality and multiplicity that we don't see the wholeness, the integrated wholeness and the synthesis of things, may it be so that the whole is seen as one. Uh, Francis Donald has provided us with a beautiful image here. He's done a couple of them, but I'm going to focus on uh, this one particularly. And as you can see, there's, uh, there seem to be uh, three uh, applicants at this uh, ancient temple dating from a uh, a very uh, old period, uh, maybe the period of uh, individualization, says Francis. And uh, above here we see the, uh, the hierarchical rulers of this 12-fold temple. And this is the gate. You know, it said uh, the gate into life of those who must know death. That is cancer. And it's the death of consciousness, uh, the death of the expanded consciousness that the soul and the monad have. And then uh, finally the outer gate, the other gate that leads us into greater life, the gate into life of those who know not death. So this is our whole incarnational experience. Let's see some of the things that uh, Francis has said here. Um, it's an ancient uh, Cancerian portal, he says, that leads into human incarnation. A kingdom, it's the fourth kingdom. We first entered in an eon long past. Well, you know, uh, for some of us, uh, maybe 18 million years ago and a half, and for others who took their individualization on the moon chain, well, they came in in Atlantis, in the third uh, sub-race of Atlantis, but that was, you know, 10 million years ago as well. And they have a much older history. On the far side of the temple, the portal of Capricorn opens uh, into the realm of the fifth kingdom. And we see that Saturn is over the lintel here. It uh, opens into the kingdom of the soul, the fifth kingdom in which the solar angels uh, have such a big role uh, to play uh, teaching humanity along the way, and they are ruled by Capricorn. So um, opens into the fifth kingdom, its dual apex of hierarchy and Shambhala just hidden from view. The soul stands at the center. By emulating its open-handed gesture, the personality depicted in the foreground has begun to take on the quality of that with which it has aligned itself and thus glows with soul light. So we, uh, yeah, we, the larger picture here, I suppose, is that of the personality which is beginning to glow with the light of the soul. I think everything is represented here. The soul, uh, the personality of the soul and the monad, the triple man uh, going th uh, through this temple, you know, our whole incarnated life is like a temple. Really, there are three temples, you know. The, uh, the personality is one. The uh, Temple of Solomon on the higher mental plane is another. And the Temple of Evil, which is the home of the monad, that's the third. And every one of these temples eventually has to be destroyed for the purpose of greater liberation.
The temple, he says, is made up of twelve columns and twelve lintels forming twelve portals. The lintels are embossed with the symbol of the esoteric rulers of the twelve astrological signs. I guess it's the esoteric rulers he's put in there. Yeah, I think so. The six potencies, astrological axes that make up the temple's interior space, represent the field <coughs> of incarnated human experience. The temple is of ancient design. It stretches back to the time of individualization when the substance out of which it was then fashioned began recording the gradual awakening of soul content. And now, after eons of struggle, that's for all of us, of course, to integrate the personality, and we're not all there yet, are we, and gain soul alignment, its opaque stones have begun to gain the color and transparency of the soul that stands at its center. So you begin to see that the, the stones are taking on some of the color and some of the radiance, some of the luminosity of the soul. Okay, now, uh, right, 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 and you will notice that the Temple of Light is oriented along the Cancer Capricorn axis, and we stand before the first great gate, the gate into human incarnation, looking towards the second, the gate of initiation. And that's where we are right now. We've been at this for a, lo a long time. And uh, our opportunity now as humanity is to step through the first portal of initiation, and the members of the new group of world servers are oftentimes characterized by an orientation towards the second uh, initiation, and maybe the true members have taken that initiation. Anyway, great possibilities lie before us. Well, he goes on to describe the geometry of the uh, cube and of the square, and just a few, just a couple of things said here. In Cancer, living substance. Uh, the threefold figure in the image assumes the triple differentiated relationship to which we give the names of life, Aries, represented by the inmost, tiny inmost figure, that's the monad, consciousness, Taurus, that's the central figure, and manifested duality, that's Gemini, the outer figure. And these three blend together. They are subjective signs, we're told, you know, and they come into outer manifestation to be consciously directed and controlled in cancer, the sign of integration having to do with the physical plane where we actually do put in an appearance, as it is said, thus leading to the great liberation which takes place in the polar opposite to cancer, and that is Capricorn. So I think we all realize how important it is that we... Um, uh, take advantage of these astrological energies because on the basis of them uh, we are able to work out our own salvation life after life as the we are equipped with the different energies and the different rays until finally we do indeed build a lighted house first maybe the lighted house of the integrated personality that begins to shine forth and be of some value in the world and then uh, all of that uh, while that's happening the causal body is growing in radiance and brilliance and beauty and uh, we are uh, having the consummated full flowering of our vehicle of consciousness on the higher mental plane you know and then <laughs> all temples have to be destroyed one day because as beautiful as they are they represent uh, limitation and uh, the limitation has to go so that we can step into a wider ring pass knot. Uh, from the tabernacle in the wilderness, which is the personality, we step into the Temple of Solomon, which is the causal body, and from the destruction at the fourth degree, uh, you know, a great event in the life of the developing soul, uh, we step into the Temple of Ezekiel, the Temple of the Monad, but it's not permanent, of course, because that has to be destroyed as well. Ever, ever greater ring pass knots uh, or rings pass knot must be entered and then uh, are fully lived through and uh, enjoyed and we become a servant of that temple and then the temple has to be destroyed. Eventually, the whole universe becomes our temple. Now, it's going to be a long, long time, you know. For, for, for emanations such as we are, maybe trillions and trillions of years and maybe bigger numbers than that. Uh, they say the duration of a universe, uh, of a solar system, is 311 trillion, 40 billion years. So you can only imagine what uh, an entire universe would be regardless of what uh, 
uh, science with this rather sh short-sighted view is telling us at this time, it'll be a long time, but one day the entire universe will be our temple and our monadic uh, essence will be drawn back into the fullness of the universal God which we will recognize ourselves to be and then we'll be ready once again for the infinitive time for the great adventure of entering uh, into the absoluteness of the post Maha Pralaya. Anyway, uh, may we learn to build our personality temple and our soul temple, those are the ones we're working on now, may we learn to build them in the correct way so that they are filled with light. Okay, everybody, now let's, uh, we'll get into the work that we're doing leading up to, um, leading up to tomorrow's, about, you know, maybe 24 hours from now, something like that, a little, something like that, a little bit more, where we're going to have the exact full moon work. Uh, and then after that, I'm, I'm going, uh, the next day I'm going to be broadcasting for those who are interested, uh, the Cancer Musical Solar Fire uh, Ritual Meditation. Long name, but uh, basically it's a, it's a musical meditation and you can participate in that if you like. And uh, the link is given to you in the chat box. So what I would do recommend is that you um, just copy the contents of the chat box and then just paste it where you can review it and see what you might like to attend. Okay, so let's go on now. Uh, we're in a day of, uh, we might say, uh, uh, aspiration, perhaps dedication really is beginning. Uh, personality attitudes uh, toward uh, preparing for the day of reception, the day of safeguarding, the day of receiving and holding. I like to think of this as beginning about uh, 12 hours before the a full moon. Uh, DK has told us, uh, you know, that, well, maybe it was only for the group at that time, but he's on the lookout for 12 hours uh, before the actual full moon and uh, maybe uh, some other masters too, uh, towards the group approach of uh, aspiring disciples who can then be noticed and energized and uh, uplifted uh, by their attempt to approach that point of tension which we call the ashram approach it together and then we'll have our days of distribution and really um, well we, we need it so badly these days if you look at what's going on in the world it's just uh, chaotic it's understandable uh, you know uh, given the position of Pluto uh, my wife too has always been emphasizing what Pluto and Capricorn can do and we're really seeing that it's happening a lot of structures are really being broken down now and uh, the lower depths are coming to the surface uh, you might say that the gates of hell are opening a bit and we have to deal with that precipitation on the uh, physical plane so if we can achieve the kind of harmony that is possible in cancer the kind of integration the kind of one family of man that is possible then uh, maybe we can help alleviate some of this uh, terrible problem uh, but what has to happen of course is that Christ said I come to bring not peace but the sword well it's the sword of discrimination it's the sword of vision where you can see what is good what is bad you know what is tending towards the fulfillment of the divine plan and what is working in the opposite direction along with the forces of obstruction so we you know it's, it's not like everybody sees that really clearly Humanity doesn't see it clearly. And maybe as disciples that we're attempting to be, we see it a little more clearly. But now a great clarification has to occur about what is good and what is evil in our world. And uh, it's a sinuous line, Master Moria tells us, but we have to be able to discriminate. And a lot of these uh, terrible events are helping us uh, with that discrimination. Heavy price to pay, but the lords of karma are at work. All right. So, friends, let's uh, now um, change our tempo a bit here. And we will um, quiet the outer form 
and the astral body and the mental body all with the breath becoming still and we in doing this we realize that in one sense we are the soul in incarnation we are that unit of being and consciousness, being consciousness. And we're working through a certain threefold field that eventually we have to master. But we are the observer. When we reach out to each other in the state of consciousness as soul-infused personalities, becoming that and realizing that we are, all of us, souls on the higher mental plane, we reach out towards each other and regardless of personality, this and that, we feel the harmony which is the spiritual harmony between us, all the other things are just they don't really matter in the long run so we begin to sense among ourselves that deeper sense of the group soul which is existing in a field of light and of group love and of group sacrificial will so we're like a unit of light love and will power and in that way we reach out to the members of the new group of world servers seeing them as souls in all the different countries, the points of brighter light, as DK tells us, amidst the many units of dimmer light, we reach out in soul to all the servers and we reach out to the men and women of goodwill found in the different countries. It's a soul expansion that we visualize. And we reach out in soul really to all human beings, wherever they may be, whatever country, whether they are in incarnation or not in incarnation, we reach out in soul to the entire human family, or maybe I should say reach in, in a way. There's no one that's outside the circle of our inclusion. The many souls, the many consciousnesses, it's like one consciousness. Wherever there is consciousness, you can at least imaginatively participate in that consciousness. You are there, as it were. And finally, there is no my soul or thy soul. It's just one consciousness. And the ancient mantra is true, and we try to make it true for ourselves. 
naught is but me. The larger me, the consciousness of humanity, that we somehow learn to include and participate in. Remember that harmlessness is the expression of the life of the man who realizes himself to be everywhere. That's how DK begins the definition. Somehow we have this sense of the one soul of humanity in which all the billions of souls play their part in the unity but are not really separate in any way. We're focusing together. A lot of this will be done on the plane of mind as we think together, the soul is called the thinker, but we will be accessing the higher energies to be received and wielded from this point of tension on the plane of mind. And the soul, the group soul, is feeding this point of tension we're holding together. We're holding a focus with will. the will to initiate, the will to unify, the will to evolve, the will to harmonize, the will to act, the will to cause, will to express. All these fortify that point of concentration that we're all holding at the group mental unit. It is, in a way, the foundation of the Antikarana. It's as if we draw up all the energies of the group personality into this point of intention. We're going to visualize the rainbow bridge. It is, for each one of us particularly, we are instructed a two-colored bridge. We can see it rising cone-like towards an apex that we can consider the pure being of the monad. And the colors are those of the personality and the soul. If we know our rays there, or maybe just the indigo ray, if we're not quite certain. And our bridge rises with all the other bridges. Some prefer to think of a big sphere going towards the center, or we can rise in a cone towards the spirit aspect. Through the impersonal point of view of the spiritual triad, the rising through the abstract mind, rising through the sphere of intuition, rising through the sphere of spiritual will and 
into the sphere of being and identification, the monad, the many, many colors now of the group bridge. You probably know the colors. They're on the screen if you need them, according to the rays. And we're going to, from our point of tension, we're going to use a word of power. Normally we'd use the word of power of our soul ray, but when you're doing the group work, everybody shares the word of power and we'll use the second ray. I see the greatest light. So what we'll do, outwardly we will sound the Om, and inwardly you will pronounce meaningfully with orientation towards the higher worlds and as a member of the group you'll pronounce inwardly I see the greatest light so we'll sound three ohms and project that vivid line of brilliant white light across the bridge anchoring through the triad and imaginatively into the realm of pure being Oh Imaginatively created a bridge of light along which the will, the wisdom, the mind of the spiritual triad and the sense of being of the monad, this bridge of light along which these powers, perspectives, energies can descend into the group. We have, in a way, imaginatively penetrated into the world where the hierarchy is always focused. They always, as arhats and masters, have a point of tension in this world, whereas we are simply applicants to these higher worlds via the bridge of light, the Antikarana. So having at least imaginatively penetrated into these worlds and created a bridge by which the higher energies can reach us, we will offer our salutations to the Great Ones, our solidarity, our willingness to cooperate, to stand with, and to help carry out the divine plan which they know so well. And we are learning to know. So we'll first offer our salutations to the great Lord Maitreya, the head of the spiritual hierarchy, and then some of the other masters. Salutations to the Christ, the Master of all Masters.
salutations to the Triangle of Masters with whom we work most closely, Masters M, KH, and DK. Salutations to the Master Moria, the head of all esoteric schools and organizations. Salutations to the Master Kutumi, whose ashram is the most responsible in preparing for the reappearance of the Christ. Salutations to the Master Jual Kool, whose special responsibility it is to train aspirants for the first, two, and even the third initiation. Then we offer our salutations to whomever may be our own master as we know him to be or imagine him to be. Salutations to the entire spiritual hierarchy of our planet. Oh. It's our purpose to work cooperatively with them as they are the custodians of the plan and in every ashram some aspect of the plan is being formulated and for disciples such as we are in our own spheres we attempt to carry out what we can and in the right way according to the will of the ashram with which we find ourselves most affiliated or approaching let us say and now we turn our attention as a group, imaginatively, to the center where the will of God is known, to Shambhala. We have to have humility because we realize that even the hierarchy can only approach Shambhala a couple of times a year through the entire body of the hierarchy with the Christ. So we're not walking right in the door of Shambhala, the way some people imagine they do. <clears throat> but, identified as a group soul, we attempt at least to attune to the presence of the great king, Sanat Kumara, the lord of the world, the lord of Venusian love, what may be that purpose that is 
pouring through hierarchy and some little bit of which can reach us in our own limited spheres. So we attune to that and deeply within and silently we sound an om, imagining the group imbued with his energy. Increasingly, as disciples, we are in a position to learn something about the divine will. We don't know much yet. DK has said really nothing at all, but we can begin to learn via the Antikarana. And we do know somehow that in this second ray solar system and on this planet whose soul ray is the second, that the will of God is love. So with that as kind of a background, foundational understanding, we can learn more and more about it. So we have our alignment, and we're going to particularly work as if with Master DK. He is the expert on planetary, cosmic, and creative hierarchical energies. And we imagine that we all come together at this point of tension as if we are somehow compressed, united in a point of light, love, and power. We'll leave behind the imagination of our extension in time and space and we come together as if we are above a golden stream a pathway leading into the heart of an indigo sun and we progress together toward the center of that indigo sun going with the golden pathway which gets shorter and shorter and shorter until it is absorbed within the indigo sun where we as a group can now imagine ourselves to be And there we will, as if, meet with the consciousness of Master D.K. Attempting as a group to become, at this time, a little bit of an outpost of his consciousness. As we try to approach an understanding of the planets, the rays, the signs, with which we can now work at this time and which, with which we can help. We can help distribute these energies. We will be looking particularly together at the, the moon, veiling Vulcan, Neptune, and Uranus. The moon, for all of us, the prison of the soul, as it is said. Uh, just the way the lunar lords, until they are redeemed and have been freed, are the prisoners, or hold us as prisoners, hold our soul nature as prisoner. And we'll be looking at Neptune, the esoteric ruler, opening the emotional nature to the energies of love and the higher octave of Neptune, its higher vibrations as the hierarchical ruler, 
imbuing our consciousness with buddhi, the intuition, and even the breaking down of all boundaries and the power to identify with each other, as each other, through being. These are the energies we want to contact at this time. So we can imagine the moon, it was the physical planet of a planetary chain which is now defunct. Something called the Saturn chain has taken its place and the, the chain lord of the moon has moved or is participating in the earth chain with all of its lives seeking to continue the progress which it could not complete at that time. The mother of the form, the moon, in relation to cancer. The Vulcan physical, Neptune emotional, Uranus mental. The power to build the form in the right way so that it be, can become lighted a true lighted house, so that the light of the soul can be contained in the rightly built and purified form. So we'll open imaginatively to the idea of the Vulcanian energy flowing in, strengthening the physical etheric, the Neptunian energy sensitizing the emotions to the to love and to intuition and the Uranian energies bringing us a cult mind thereby transforming and eventually transfiguring the lunar nature We need these energies. And we can attune with them and see them flowing into our group or groups. We all need every one of these three that the moon veils. And as we purify the lunar vehicles, the veils will become thinner and thinner and attenuating. The veils will no longer obstruct the inflow of these energies we need from the three sacred planets. So let us imagine then the triple energies flowing into our group and groups, that we ourselves and all of our co-workers are imbued with the strength of Vulcan and the sensitivity of Neptune and the brilliant occult mind of Uranus. Let us imagine these flowing in on the sound of the Om, transforming our group life. Form is our chariot. The tarot card for Cancer is the chariot. We have to anchor the higher energies in a well-prepared form. 
that's the way the externalization takes place in our own microcosmic sphere and on the larger picture the personality of humanity must be receptive to and begin to anchor these energies and we can imagine how much purification will be needed for this to happen but fortunately the energies of Vulcan and Pluto are acting powerfully before the first degree can be taken and so the purification and we're witnessing it right now in the world with all of its unpleasantness so that purification can occur now we look at Neptune from the esoteric perspective conveying the power to refine and sensitize and calm the astral body rendering it receptive to the love and compassion of the buddhic plane Neptune the soul ray of Neptune probably the sixth I suspect with a special connection to all astral natures whether the astral body of the human being or of the planetary deity or the astral body of the entire solar system and even the cosmic astral plane on which the astral body of our solar logos can be found so very important at the second initiation and wherever true striving towards higher things can be found where would the ray of Neptune its presence help in our group life help with the unruly and difficult astral body the most difficult to tame especially in our astral buddhic solar system it's a unified body it's not divided like the mind and the physical etheric it's unified and powerful so where are we in our groups most in need of these Neptunian qualities we try to visualize that We know that the great glamour of separation and hatred is running rampant in the world, but Neptune particularly conveys an energy that overcomes those kinds of divisive Martian reactions. So let's see the improvement that can take place in our own life the love coming in the sensitivity coming in the empathy the compassion the ability to feel what another is going through and to convey the healing energy let's sound the Om and see that transpiring as these energies flow into our group life Neptune is another name for the Christ and for the initiator at the first two initiations. We can see how this ray of Neptune is so needed 
if we have to take those first steps in the threshold initiation The love energy has to enter in, and the time of cancer is a great time for that to happen. Raising the solar plexus to the heart. And then we'll go further with a still higher aspect of Neptune as it rules cancer hierarchically. And as we're tuning with that marvelous blue planet, it's such a wonderful, deep blue Neptune, you know. As we attune with Neptune's power to reveal the all-pervading presence, the presence, all the many presences are one presence, the presence of God in matter and form, presence is here, always present. And the ability through Neptune to promote complete identification with the heart of life within the form. The monad is our center of will, but it's also located on the second cosmic ether. And heart centers are located on the second ethers. Neptune is there, heart of the sun energy, Christ energy, Buddhic energy, all fed by this Neptunian power of oneness and identification from the monadic level. So this is the saving energy, the energy of salvation through realized identification with other human beings and finally with all kingdoms and finally with all forms of life. If we're going to know ourselves to be everywhere as it is asked in this formula for harmlessness, Neptune plays a very significant role. So we think of our group life, and how this higher revelation of the Divine Presence, the transcendent qualities of Neptune, how they could really help our group life and the life of the world servers and the men and women of goodwill and eventually all of human beings. You know, not using Neptune for glamour and for false imagination, not that, but using Neptune to reveal the divine. So we feel that energy flowing in to our group and more widely into the world servers and out into the world, bringing the sense of the presence, the idea that God is love, that God is solar fire in our solar system, bringing that and we'll visualize that happening as we sound the Om for this higher aspect of Neptune.
these are some of the energies, the planetary energies that we want to be sensitive to and we want to keep building up our receptivity over the next 24 hours or so. Neptune is the guardian of the solar flames and that immediately takes us to the idea of our great solar god and his soul nature, the heart of the sun, conditioned by the second ray, his soul ray, and the monadic ray of Neptune. So we're all monadically, we all find our home within the sun, at least for a time. That, that solar logos is very intimate to us all, really, if we could realize it when we look at the blazing orb of the sun, not just some luminous physical body there, but a great deity in whom we all play a part. We're all units of love wisdom somehow in this solar system. And the great solar logos is everywhere present. That great love, wisdom, energy pouring through all of the planets, planetary logoi and into our planetary logos, into Shambhala and the hierarchy and reaching us through our energy centers. Let's imagine that happening. We participate in the great flow of solar logoic love wisdom union of the sun and the moon. It's Leo and Cancer. Two proximate signs, but really it's the solar logos and Neptune. And participating in the heart of the sun energy. None of this terrible divisive, hate-filled Interplay could go on if the heart of the sun energy were really suffusing the consciousness of human beings. So as DK says, endeavor to serve and spread love in your surroundings and in as much as you can do this, you're blending your little will with the large purpose of the will of God. But outside our solar system come the, from constellations outside, come the energies we're talking about now. The energy of Cancer and its light, the light within the form, which has to be raised in brightness, the diffused light of substance itself, the dark light of matter. It is the light awaiting the stimulation coming from soul light. Leo, the light of the soul, and Cancer, the dark light. And Vulcan will help make that light radiate brighter and brighter until through the form we will also shine. That's what it means to have a lighted house. Are we shining? Are we radiating through our soul body, through the personality, and eventually, at greatest uh, for a human being, radiance of all from the spirit nature? It's a very dim constellation, 
cancer. Maybe it wasn't in the previous solar system looking so dim to our particular solar logoic demonstration. That was an earlier system where cancer was strong. Maybe it was more powerful in a way. But we want to open ourselves to the feel of that energy quality of cancer. It's very related to matter, substance, third ray physicality and seventh ray etheric. The feel of the Cancerian energy coming from the constellation and adapted through the sign of the zodiac, attuned to the constellational energy. This is a real energy. It's very available now. It can open up and embrace the world, or it can close off and become nativist and insular and self-protective in an isolated way. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the embracing aspect of cancer. We will ponder on what the mantra means and how the process is going in our lives and how it could be improved and in our group life and in the life of humanity. I build a lighted house and therein dwell. As souls together, with the soul illumining the plane of mind, open to the intuition, open to the spiritual will, open to the sense of being, we ponder together, I build a lighted house, and therein dwell.
I build the lighted house and therein dwell. And what is it that is dwelling in the lighted house? That is something for everyone to answer. We do know the lighted house of humanity, the human personality and the human soul. These have to be built. While it is true of disciples and of the New Group of World Servers and of the men and women of goodwill, it is not true of humanity as a whole. So we have to make our contribution. So keep meditating along these lines. You know we're about 24 hours away from the actual full moon, just a little more than that. We keep our alignment. You know it all comes from the local cosmic logos. Or maybe I should call it super cosmic. It's the one about whom not may be said particularly connected with the Pleiades, as is the sign Cancer. Pleiades, the source of, not just of the energy of intelligence, but the energy of cosmic booty. And for us, because it's central, it's got a great first ray energy too. And in that heart and the head center, the constellation Cancer is one of the 12 doorways that has to go forth into our local cosmic logos, the seven soul systems of which ours is one, playing the role of heart center. The Cancerian energy comes forth and it anchors in the solar logos where it is distributed particularly to the planet Neptune and thence to the other planets including our planet in Shambhala affecting all of us as spirits related to Shambhala 
affecting all of us as souls related to the Christ in the hierarchy and entering into our personalities on the different levels including the heart and the head level which reflects in a way much lower turn of the spiral the great heart in the head of the one about whom not may be said and down through the particular center in the head which is related to the heart and to the solar plexus and thence into the heart center in the solar plexus but coming back to the heart center where we learn to embrace each other in that spirit of soul unity and eventually identification as through the power of Neptune we begin to realize that we actually are each other so the alignment from the very centermost point of our local cosmos system all the way down into our personalities we can at least imagine that and we can look out into the world very troubled but where is this Cancerian lighted house Neptunian heart of the Sun energy needed maybe we can imagine some location some situation kind of direct it there to see better results our imagination can be powerful as we direct the light and the intuition and the oneness energy towards an area where it's really needed sound the own seeing that energy well applied making a difference a positive difference for the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the Christ 
is to use the great invocation. It is a, a mantra of light and power, and it has been given to humanity in 1945 when the Christ made his decision that he would indeed return in physical appearance, dense physical appearance. And that is, uh, of course, uh, a great sacrifice on his part. So, trying to get this open here, the great invocation, but uh, doesn't, there it is. I know that we know this by heart, so many of us, but um, just in case. And we'll close our meditation in alignment with the Cancerian energy and the idea of the one family of humanity. And the synthesis, the integration desirable integration in harmony of the one human family, the race of men of the fourth stanza, the race of human beings. Let's sound the invocation with all the benevolent possibilities in mind. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Friends, we're in that period, day of dedication leading up to the actual full moon moment, 10.56 and 31 seconds, p.m. GMT on the 19th, at least where GMT exists.
for some it will be the next day, the 20th, and maybe for most the 19th. So hold the mantra in your mind, I build a lighted house and therein dwell, keep the alignment, realize the power of Neptune to break down barriers, and uh, in the dialog box there, the chat box, you will see where you can tune in with us uh, for tomorrow's broadcast. It'll be a broadcast, not a webinar. And I, I, for a change, I'll be handling it. My wife, too, usually handles it, but she's out of town. So, you know, bear with me. I'll do my best. And then on the next night, uh, there'll be a musical broadcast uh, of the Cancer Solar Fire uh, Oratorio Ritual Meditation. We've been completing these as we go along, and uh, it'll be a meditative opportunity with music. So have a wonderful full moon. If um, we don't get a chance to work with you, and if we do, we'll see you in about, about 24 hours. So all the best to all of you, and let that point of tension grow as we embrace all of humanity, and we realize that the whole the whole is seen as one, one of the great mantras of cancer. Bye-bye for now, and we'll have this up on Makara as soon as we can manage. All the best to you, and we'll see you before long. Bye-bye.